Hey guys, welcome back to Sonic Academy. I'm Dom Kane and I'm looking at Snap Heap from Killer Hearts or KHS. Um, in the previous video, I went through the macros, the LFOs, the envelopes, what plugins are available inside this plugin. Um, and in this video, I'm going to be looking a few examples of where I've used it in a track. Um, I'll just show you some of the track here. Uh, let's have a look if I play from the start of this part. You can hear what it sounds like. <laughs> So that's the basic of the track. It then, if I skip over to here, you'll hear a big snare roll. That all builds up and then goes into the main part over here. So that's the kind of vibe of the track that I've got going on at the moment. Um, Starting with this first melody, what I've done is I've just bunched up these channels here for now because these are the ones I happen to use Snap Heap in uh, before I was even thinking about doing this video. So um, I actually can't even remember what I've got in there. So let's have a look. Uh, the main melody here, if I solo that channel, load up Snap Heap and here we go. Right, so I'll just play you that. In fact, I'll play it without and I'll turn it on and off while it plays. Okay, so you can hear there's quite a bit of difference in that. And what do I have? So I've got a reverser in there. Oh, that's something I, I really like. If I turn these off, and again, showing how easy it is to do that. In fact, what I can do is turn these back on and turn the channels off, and that's even easier. So I've got the reverser and the difference with that. And turn it off. So you can hear what that's doing. I mean, the, the clue is in the title. Um, it's giving this sort of backwards reverb to it, um, which is just something I, I love. Uh, you can also change the timing of it. So let's have a play with that. So it's almost like a, a delay in there as well. I've got some distortion, but it's just some saturation. Uh, the drive isn't up too high. I don't think I've done too much with anything here. The mix is at 100%, um, and that should just make it a little bit crispier, I suppose. Um, and then if I switch the reverser off so we can hear it a bit clearer, There you go, so you can really hear the, the, the saturation just in the top end of the sound there. And then with the reverser, it just adds a lot more um, fluidity, I suppose, to, to the whole synth. Um, then I've got a phaser, turn that channel on. There's a phaser and a ladder filter. Uh, the phaser, we all know what a phaser sounds like, so I'm not going to go through that in too much detail. The ladder filter is... Uh, one of Bob Moog's inventions. Um, so it's a particularly famous type of filter. It's, it has quite a nice bit of warmth to it in, in general. What I've done is if I signed, uh, if I hover here, look, you can see the LFO starts flashing. Um, and that's because I've assigned the LFO in 16th notes, synchronized sine waves to just flutter the cutoff of the filter basically. So if I play you that now. Yeah. 
So you can see I'm really just, just taking the, the very top end off just to add a little bit of flutter to the, um, to the synth. Um, <clears throat> if I play the synth again with it switched off and then switch it on. You can see, you can hear it's, it's, it's barely doing anything. I mean, I can make it more extreme um, and show you. So there we go, so that's basically all that's doing. Uh, then in this channel I've got an instance of tape stop which actually isn't doing anything at the moment, but if I press this button, essentially it's like a, an old tape deck or even a vinyl deck, we all know what the tape stop effect sounds like, so I'll just give you an example of pressing that, but obviously I can automate it inside the track. And that's what it sounds like. Um, and that's it. It's, yeah, that's it for that channel. So I'll go on to the next one, which is my main line. And we've got Snap Heap here. So I've got a few things going on here. Um, I've got Kilohertz Facturator. Uh, which is a plugin I've been using for years. Um, does exactly what it says on the tin, makes things fat and saturated. Um, so if I just give you a quick example of that, if I play with the drive maybe. Or even if I turn it off, you can hear the difference. Um, I've also got a bit crusher down here, uh, it's not doing too much, you can see the mix is pretty low down um, and that's just adding a little sizzle to the track. Um, I've got some reverb here, um, what I've done is I've assigned it to is it LFO2 for some random reason um, and I've just assigned the mix in quarter notes. And all it's doing is is it's because it's in a, a saw um, a shape. It, it's it's lifting the mix level, um, which isn't doing anything too drastically. But you can just hear basically tails of the notes in the reverb. Um, if I lift that mix up. Uh, maybe increase the size, you probably hear it more dramatically. So you can hear then it, it's, it's a bit more, I mean, it's a, it doesn't sound so good now, but because I wanted it to be subtle, but for the sake of this demo, uh, you, you can hear what it's doing there. Um, so there's that. I've also got a resonator. Um, Resonators are, are actually the kinds of things that I think people rarely use a, a resonator and, and sometimes it can sound great if you want to almost tune a tom drum or something like that. Um, sometimes even hi-hats it can sound good. I've whacked it in this, I don't know why, but I've set it to the key of F um, and I've got a just under 50% mix on it. Um, I'll play you that now with it switching on and off. So you can hear because that that note is is in F all the way through anyway. It's easy to resonate that, um, and it just adds a, almost a tinny effect, but it adds to the facturator and the bit crush, and it just just brings out that sound a little more basically. Um, and that's pretty much all I've got on that channel. Um, I think I have also used it in this one as well. Let's have a look. Here we go. So soloing this, all this is is a little staccato, couple of notes at the end of every phrase. Um, that's all it's doing. <clears throat> so I'm not going to show you too much on that. There's not much to show you. I've got chorus and phaser, 
both of them 100% mix. Default settings, I think. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much that. It just adds a little bit of flavour to it. Um, oh, I also added, just before the video, I added this one in just to give you an example of one of the effects it can do. So what I've got here is just a string sound um, and it's just one note. Uh, I'll play you that. Pretty straightforward. It's just a string note with a bit of sidechain compression. But there's this trance gate uh, is one of the drop-ins for this plugin, uh, which I thought was a pretty cool effect. Um, so I'll play the string and then turn that on. So, I mean, if you're into making that sort of arpeggiated, syncopated, whatever, um, it's a great little plugin actually. So I'll just play it again. So it's as easy as that to use. You've got different sort of preset rhythms here. Um, and then you can just fill in the blanks. So you can just press these, you can change the amount of steps that it has, like that. Um, and then just turn them on and off, basically, to, to get your own arpeggiated rhythms. It's pretty cool. And then last but not least, the snare rolls. Uh, so these snare rolls, I'll probably start from over here because they don't really kick in for a while. What have I got on here? Another resonator, so I was talking earlier on, you can drop them into percussive sounds like tom drums. I've dropped them into the snares here. So you can hear that's just adding a little a little more punch, but it's it's sort of almost tuned punch, I suppose. I've then got a compressor, we all know what a compressor is, and then some distortion on overdrive. It's not over the top. Um, if I wanted it to be, it could be. Yeah, and I think that's that's the main load of it. Um, like I say, you've got comb filters, uh, you've got s stuff like a disperser, which is a really weird plugin that sometimes just sounds awesome. It's worth playing with that. Um, it's essentially a, a filter that you can sweep without changing the frequencies. And I know that sounds very odd and it doesn't really make much sense. Um, but if I play, for example, this. It's basically playing with the transients in certain frequencies. Um, and you can come up with some pretty clever stuff in there. Um, that, that sounds like you've got a big sweeping filter, um, but it's kind of not. Um, you've also got, what else? You've got formant filters. So again, if you wanted to um, have a filter that was set to particular pitches or, or uh, give that sort of that vocal filter sound, um, then that's great. Pitch shifters, ring mods, yeah. So there's just there's loads of stuff in there. It's well worth playing. Um, and there we go. That, I think, is the, uh, the main bulk of where I've used it in this track. Yeah, cheers. Thanks for listening. See you soon. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.